You and Chris are going to be in here talking about God knows what. I do. In a certain area. I do. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, there are reasons we don't videotape <laughs> the recording <laughs> of this particular podcast. Let me just tell you something. If you grew up with us, you're warped. Yeah. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Dude, do you realize it has <clears throat> been almost two months since we have sat at this podcast table? together are you serious serious almost two months because the last was the tail end of august the last time we sat down let me tell you something recorded i when, will uh, drink to that <laughs> there you go uh so yeah it's been almost two months but folks as you know we we usually do multiple episodes when we sit and record so we had like six in the can which amazingly enough is a very low budget movie that chris was in 20 years ago called mm-hmm. six in the can he played the part of the husband leaving for work Anyway, uh, God, welcome to the podcast, folks. Uh, <laughs> if you're offended by that, it's going to get worse. If you're uh, not offended by that, you probably hung out with us on an early you age. You probably <laughs> did. And, and God bless, and, and, and bless your heart. Bless your heart. Uh, folks, today, uh, is, uh, it, it, is, it is now October, and the last time we sat down together, it was, it was in August. So the weather I has... I really can't believe that. The, it, it's true. Because I mean, I you had... No, that can't be right, man. Yeah, that's true. Is it? Yeah, because almost I, we didn't do anything in September because I had I had the big vacation thing coming up. Uh, guys, I wanted to, but uh, it, it was no. me. It was me. It was totally, totally me. I mean, I mean, I had a big vacation coming up, <laughs> and you know, it, it seems like any time you're getting ready to go on a vacation, everything in the world happens to right before you go. Right. It's just it's just the way things work. Uh, Brad, my oldest son, his car died literally the day before we were supposed to leave to go on the cruise. And you know, I, I looked. I said, "Well, it's going to wait till we get back. <laughs> I will come get you." And so we just got it back today. <clears throat> so that helps things, though, doesn't it? Oh man, <laughs> yeah, that just totally that just totally helps. Well, uh, since since we last saw each other, I had a, a wedding anniversary. 30, you did. 30 years. 30 years. Ladies and gentlemen, I did not do this at the very beginning of the podcast because usually I introduce Chris. But for this uh, studio audience, what do you think about that? 30 years, guys. 30, 30 years. years. That's right. Women are weeping in the front row, but he's <laughs> taken, ladies. He's Sorry. taken. Yeah. Sorry, my wife is mean. Yeah. That's- <laughs> Uh, no more than my wife is mean. Yeah. Then we're going to leave it there. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the topic, when we finally get around to it today, is going to be spooky urban legends. I like that word, spooky. Spooky. Love is kind of crazy with a spooky little girl like you. I didn't, I didn't start that. You, you kind of did. I did not. Well, all right, well but you know what? You it's know, a cool tune. I like it. It is a cool tune. Uh, so, uh, so you had an anniversary. I did. And I uh, went on an amazing vacation with the family. You did. And I, uh, I'm envious. Uh, to, uh, we took a cruise out of Seattle and uh, then cruised up north to Alaska. And, did you uh, see any whales? Uh, we did. Uh, they, Crap. they they were hanging out in the adults only area of the. Oh, oh, you mean no? Um, they I'm were in so, the casino and they, they were, were getting the all the all the perks. Uh, it's like I don't think that stool was going to hold her, but you know, but no, uh, no. Actually, we did. Uh, my my boys actually saw orcas uh, from really? the ship. I didn't get to see those, and I thought that was extremely Man. cool. Uh, That's cool. When we were in Victoria, Canada, we were actually on the bus. Uh, uh, going into Victoria from the cruise port, and out in the bay, we saw humpbacks, which I thought was extremely cool. We didn't see any from the ship, which is kind of disappointing. We went kind of late in the season. We were the last cruise of the season. Really? I didn't know that they cut them off. Oh, they they... do, because it gets the, the weather 
Even when we were there, the weather was a little dicey. I'm think, I was thinking they'd be out there showing them the doggone most dangerous catch. People. Yeah, basically. here you go. You too. One of the excursions is you can work on a crab boat. Yeah. I don't even think Carnival would do that. Oh uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. It's like Carnival's like, uh, yeah. You want to pet this monkey? Yeah. We don't know if it's going to bite you or not, but go ahead, pet the monkey. Uh, uh, my daughter had. I had. We went on a cruise down. Of course, we went to the Caribbean. And uh, my daughter, the one, the on and only thing she wanted to do on the whole cruise was we were going to Little French Key, which is off of Rotan, Honduras. Yeah. And they had baby leopards. Yeah. And she wanted to hold a baby leopard. You could pay money to hold a baby leopard. Well, pay. I, I pay fifty dollars for her to be able to hold this baby leopard, and we got people <laughs> going to take pictures for us and all of this. And they bring a full size damn leopard out. <laughs> and she's like, no, no, no. Oh, hell no, not Cayenne. Cayenne was like, bring me that kitty, <laughs> kitty. Yeah. <laughs> and she's he took her out in the water, man, and put the cat on her, and it just sat there and posed. Yeah. It was crazy. I know. I'm. Really and truly, the whole time I was like, I, I, I don't like this. I'm not sure. I don't like this at all. <laughs> and then, of course, my mom sees the picture. Are you people out of your minds? What the? <laughs> you know, and I, Jesus, mama. Uh, I, 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 I just wanted my daughter to be happy. Yeah, right? that's right. And then, then somebody put a monkey on her shoulder. And, and then, went, yeah. Yeah, it we was went. Terrible. Um, but here's what I'll say about Alaska, and I do think that there's a future episode that we're actually going to talk about cruising, uh, because so many people our age are getting into doing that. I highly recommend it, and I highly recommend it. Um, but this is one what, what I want to say about cruising and Alaska in particular, whether or not you cruise there or you fly there, you can watch these TV shows about Alaska. All day long. Oh my gosh! There's cayenne with a full size. That, that is a full. That, that's that's a I'm big saying, leopard. <laughs> that's amazing. Um, the, the photo. It's like that's not. A, that's not a baby. Um, but you see these TV shows about Alaska, and I don't care if they. I told you it's a monkey. Man. It's a monkey. It's you got a monkey on the back. Got a monkey on the back. Um, <clears throat> these TV shows about Alaska. You cannot get a sense of the scope and scale of the landscape until you actually are there looking at it. because it's almost impossible to take in on tv uh, on on tv and when you see it it's just i mean it's over i get exactly why people want to live there right i also know why i couldn't yeah uh, i know you know uh the food prices there <laughs> uh milk was over nine dollars a gallon that's ridiculous. You know, and just the price of food because uh, <laughs> places like Juno and Skagway, where we went to, there are no roads going in there. You have to get everything shipped or flown in. Right. And so the the food prices are just insane there. But it, it was it was extremely cool. Uh, the 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 landscape of Alaska is just it's amazing. And if you have the wherewithal, uh, do it. Go see it. it. It's just, it's it's almost overwhelming at times so to see it. Not, not trying to one-up you at all, but speaking of landscapes and not being able to understand until you've seen it. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was 16, I went to Philmont Scout Ranch, oh. and we backpacked for the Rockies, 110 miles yeah. in 10 days. And one of the excursions we had was the highest peak on Philmont was like 13,700 and something feet. Wow. And we went to the top, and you could see the entire Continental Divide. Oh, And it was man. the most incredible view I have ever seen. In my, that the, it was so well cool. worth the climb. Yeah. At 16, I couldn't do it today. Oh, but at 16, right. I well, at 16, you could do all – you can cut an arm off and watch it grow back. Right, That's, that's right. the thing about being 16. But it was really – I understand. I get yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. Because you don't get it until you see it. When you, you see you it, don't like, get it crap, man. Until you get it. Hey, folks, you are actually listening to The Retro Show. And I want to tell you a little bit about uh, the podcast. We are two guys born in the 1960s. We are raised in the 70s and 80s. I don't know that we ever truly grew up, but here we are. <laughs> they finally um, kicked us out. That's why they kicked us out. <laughs> uh, but it, it, this show celebrates growing up in the 70s and 80s. As I like to say, it is an homage to that time period. So You know, you, you watch Instagram reels or, or TikTok reels of the, the people that are Gen X and mm -hmm. all the stuff that they say. 
It's all true. It's all true. It's all, it's all true. It's all true. Uh, you know, and people's like, because we, we, we really don't care. Uh, no, you know? we don't care. And we really <laughs> so, were kicked out of the house. And, you, and we were kicked out of the house. We drank out of the garden hose. Yeah, and, the magical garden hose. Uh, the, the magical, yes. Um, it, here's here's the, the, the thing. I was thinking about this today. Uh, landlines. Yeah. When's the last time you had a landline? You know, I I fought it forever. I did too. I, I I was late in getting rid of it. I was too. We were too. And I mean, it was only there was only one phone in the house. It was in my office. Mm-hmm. And I I told my wife Cindy, I, I don't want to get rid of a landline. I yeah. just don't. I don't trust cell phones. <laughs> I just yeah. don't want to get. You know, I don't. That was me. It's like, well, what if we have a disaster? Right. You know, right. that was me. And, and now Cindy's like, well, you know what? We're not paying for this shit anymore. Yeah. So Excuse my language. <laughs> So we got rid of the landline. Yeah. I, I, I can't read. It's been about 10 years, I think, I, for us. I don't know who wears the pants at my house, but I assure you it's not me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's like, trust me, it, it was me. I think I was the one that was holding on to it, uh, basically because I knew my parents knew that number. Right. You know, and they could call it very easily. Uh, and the only people that called that number were my parents or Debbie's parents or telemarketers. There was nobody else that called that. And so finally, when I had to get rid of it, I was like, look, we're going to be getting rid of this. You have my cell number. Just call it. If you want to call Debbie, call her cell number. You know, I realize that's two numbers to keep up with now. But, right. That, um, um, Cindy, Cindy kept our home number as her cell number. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can port those over. Mm-hmm. I wish I had a, uh, but I didn't. I, I got close. I used I still, the last four I still digits. remember your parents' phone number. 2783. Yeah, 327-2783. Yep. 501-327-2783. Yeah, you people was, call that, and I don't know who's going to answer. There was a time when I was living in this town that you didn't have to dial 32 in front. Of, you didn't have to dial 501. You didn't have no, to dial 32. You, just you dialed 925 which was the yeah. fire shop at the time. You know, and that yeah. was it. And that's it. That's all you had to do. Uh, folks, the topic of today, I don't know if we talked. Yeah, spooky urban legends of the 70s and 80s. And when we come back, we're going to talk about some spooky stuff here on the Retro Show. Hey, Chris, guess what? What? Hey, guess what? We got producers on this show, and it's time uh, to give them the big no. shout out. So uh, You go guys ahead. are awesome. I'm just saying. Yep. So get us kicked off here. Who, who's first on the list? LNC Corporation. You don't cross the no, LNC Corporation. Not ever. Never, never, ever. Uh, next on the list, Kevin Goff. Thank you, Mr. Goff. Goff, thanks, man. And then, of course, Norton. 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 Uh, Chris B. Chris from, B. Uh, out, out east. Thank you, Chris. Uh, also, uh, Nancy Schwartz. Nancy Schwartz. Thank you very much, Nancy. Joshua Ramsey. Big Joshua Ramsey. Big J. Man, it, it's a great. Uh, that would be a good wrestling name. Well, not only that, man, it'd be a good cowboy name. Yeah. Josh, Josh Ramsey. Ramsey. <laughs> That's right. You don't cross Josh Ramsey either. Fran, All right, who's next on the list? Fran. Fran, 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 Fran Adams, Fran Adams, Fran Adams. <laughs> e M, just the initials, man. That's all we get on that. E M. Well, thank you, thank you. And then of course, Bradford, the Behemoth, Mason, Bradford, Brad, and then uh, our very first producer ever, number one in our hearts, Tanya Highland. Thank you, and Tanya. And if you would like to also be a producer for just three bucks a month. It's very easy to do. Go to RetroShow.net, and uh, you can find more information about how you can support our podcast. Hey, guys, we are back on the Retro Show, and the topic of today's uh, Retro Show is the spooky urban legends of the 70s and 80s. Um, Sweet Fancy Moses. (laughs) I'm, I'm so glad that I don't have a camera on him right now because it's like... So why were you kicked off of YouTube? Well, that's kind of a funny story. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's that's one of the spooky urban legends right there. And I was... That's new. That's new. That's I for, like that. That's just for tonight's... I don't know. We might keep that. No, new. we're keeping that. Yeah, that's that, that's good for a lot of I, things. I here. like that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Chris, uh, you remember... These seem to especially spread around in middle school. Oh, yeah. We were like in sixth and seventh grade because, well, my cousin has a friend that, and then it would be some story. And and it turns out that these were before, this is before the days of internet. So these just spread through 
the like, country like wildfire like wildfire <laughs> uh and so w- the the first thing we're going to talk about and and i remember this one because it's probably late 70s when uh when, when we heard this rumor and that is bubble yum was made with spider eggs <laughs> he's having way too much i know <laughs> oh we're just getting started with that sound effect tonight. Oh, my Trust gosh. me. Yeah. So back in 1975, uh, Bubble Yum, if you remember, which, by the way, an excellent bubble it gum. It is an excellent it bubble gum. It was great. And it held its flavor for a it long did. time. It did. It was the important. first soft bubble gum right. to hit the market in 1975. Uh, so how could it get so soft? So some pranksters <laughs> answered that question with spider eggs. I don't know who did that, but that became a legend that spread everywhere uh, that it became so prevalent that Lifesavers, the parent company that launched Bubble Yum, had to take out an ad in newspapers <laughs> to reassure people that their candy did not contain spider eggs. Oh, my God. But that was one. I remember that one. I remember going, hey, hey, did you hear that Bubble Yum is made with spider eggs? <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to have to get him off of that. No, no. It's just, <laughs> ah, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm not sorry. It's going to happen later. But he's trying to take it away. Wait, wait, you're just going to push a button, aren't you? You don't know. That's the wrong one. Yeah. That's the one. Chris is pushing the buttons now. <laughs> He can't have all the fun. He can't have all the fun. Uh, the second one, now, I heard about this one. This one was one of oh, I did, too. Yeah. Absolutely. That Walt, it's probably true. That Walt Disney <laughs> had his body, or just his head, frozen. Now, this rumor of the animation legend having Wait, his whoa, body. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Cryogenically. Cryogenically frozen. <laughs> continues to linger today. Listen, man, I saw this in a movie. Austin Powers did that. That's true. He did. He did. And then he peed a long time. He did. That was a funny scene. <laughs> that first Austin Powers movie. Hey, excellent. we're chasing a rabbit. Imagine that it on this excellent. show. That never happens. Uh, but yeah, that scene Cardies. right there. Yeah. Circus folk. Circus folk. Small hands smell like cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the rumor was around, and I remember hearing this, that it was locked up under a vault under Disney World with all those limited edition Pinocchio DVDs. That's not the case now. Uh, Boston uh, Red Sox legend Ted Williams. That's a different story. Apparently, Ted Williams was frozen. Was he? I, apparently so. You know, dude, people got so much money, they don't know what the hell they want. And I know. So. Uh, now, I remember hearing this, too. And it, this was every Halloween. We was, would be warned. As a matter of fact, it would come out in the newspaper. You didn't get to get eat no gum apples or anything. You had to have your parents check everything mm-hmm. first because razor blades were being hidden in apples during Halloween. <laughs> Now, they're, they're this actually, is going to be a long sure. night. <laughs> Strap in, boy. It only gets worse. But, oh yeah, uh, apparently uh, there have been cases where sharp objects have been hidden in Halloween candies or apples. Zero cases of children who have been chewing on razor blades. Um, but, yeah, I remember that, man, every Halloween. And we even got warned in school. Our teachers we were, like, telling us, don't, don't. We you, did. You take it home and let your parents You went to Otter Burns. Yeah. I went to Ellen Smith. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I remember that. That was, like, second second and third grade. I tell you, those teachers, man. Yeah. And uh, this next one. Now, this was a rumor that was going around, and then it got expanded to include do a, you remember this so i do i do not i do and this came out as when was pop about i was in fifth you were probably in fourth grade yeah. when the pop rocks I thing was popular pop oh, still, I them. <laughs> still like oh, them. i'll still buy them it, you know <laughs> uh we're gonna do an entire episode one day eating pop rocks so that be, that'd be funny that hey that will be fun <laughs> <laughs> see, see, it's fun. It is it? fun. It is fun. Uh, live cereal commercial, Mikey. You remember Mikey? He likes it. Uh, on the live cereal commercial, and the rumor was that he was pill. Uh, he was killed. Pilled. He's pilled. <laughs> he was peeled. He was killed <laughs> by a mixture of Pop Rocks and Coca Cola. Now, according to this rumor, 
Mikey mixed the candy with the soda and his stomach exploded. Don't do it. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> now, this story persisted for years. No matter how many times his mom told people, hey, Mikey's good. You know, as a matter of fact, I think it was probably, it's probably been 20 years because this, because the Mikey Live Cereal commercial ran for like 30 years. And they actually came back with all the kids that were in there as adults. And had an adult Mikey in there, so obviously he did not get offed by uh, uh, an, an, ex, an extensive amount of carbon dioxide in his stomach. That's crazy to explode. That's crazy because you would burp. Yeah, right. I mean, you know, come, come on. on, you'd burp. Only yeah. only seagulls will do that with alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> well, now I know what I'm doing when I go back to Fort Walton. Um, <clears throat> uh, this is one that, of course. You know, and, and these were the kind of tales that would be told around campfires when we would be camping. The next two. Yeah, the next two. That saying Bloody Mary in front of a mirror will conjure the spirit of Bloody Mary. That's a folklore legend consisting of a ghost or spirit conjured to reveal the future. She is said to appear in a mirror when her name is called multiple times. The Bloody Mary apparition. May be benign or benevolent, but depending on the historic variations of the legend, the Bloody Mary appearances are, motley, are mostly witnessed, air quotes, witnessed in group participation games. Is Probably, this like everybody dropping acid at the same time? I think it's mainly <laughs> seventh grade girls getting into a darkened room and scaring themselves by saying Bloody Mary in front of a mirror. You know, we, I, we did this one time. And I was just like, guys, uh, you know, whether it's true or not, if this happens, I'm going to need a clean pair of shorts. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, you got a door over there. Do you reckon you want one over there? Yeah. yeah. Uh, now, this is one that uh, apparently um, a lot of people were scared in the early 80s of backward satanic messages. It was in the, the 70s, music. late 70s. Well, it was, yeah, started in the late 70s, but it yeah. continued through the early 80s because. Uh, bands like Styx, Led Zeppelin, The Eagles, and ELO were uh, said to have backwards satanic messages in their albums. Yep. True story. Uh, Dennis DeYoung, actually. <laughs> yeah. What's funny is that a lot of them did start putting backwards messages in there. And, you know, it's like funny stuff like your mother's, like your mother sells socks or something like that. You know. Yeah, but, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I never did really believe this crap. No, so. I didn't either. Uh, now, this is one. Now, my mom lived by this. No, my parents did too. Okay. And that is, this was, and, and we grew up with this. This may actually jog a memory for some of you guys. But back in the day, if, you know, if you were coming home from school and you were plopping down to watch, you know, whatever came on the afternoons or Saturday mornings or stuff, and you were sitting like three feet away from the TV like I would do. My mom would come in and say, you need to get back from that TV because you will damage your eyes yep. if you sit too close to the television. <clears throat> now, there was a grain of truth to this because there was apparently a batch of faulty TVs in the 60s that did emit dangerous eye-damaging radiation. But that was just... Why? Uh, apparently, it was a... It was a flaw in it, and it was fixed, and that was not an issue anymore, but it persisted. I mean, up or until— was, You're wearing glasses. I'm wearing glasses. I mean, come on. Uh, I'm 57. <laughs> I'm 57. There's a reason. There's a reason I'm wearing glasses. Um, it's that damn uh, TV. Now, this one comes from the 80s. Yeah, okay? I remember this. And I remember this one here. Now, do Which, you did you ever find out if it was true or not? Uh, it's not. It's not true. It's not a true story. Okay. It's a cool story, but it's not a true story because Phil was asked about it. Uh, and so that kind of spoils it right there. A drowned man and a furious Phil Collins. The story goes like this. Phil Collins apparently watched a man watch someone drown and didn't save them. And that inspired the lyrics to In the Air Tonight. Then he invited that person to a concert and sang that song to him. Now, if you if you put the song into the context of that story, you could make it fit that. 
But he said, no, that's absolutely. I never did figure out if it was true or not. It's not. It is a cool story. It's a cool story, though. It's a cool story. And then um, the the, the next one on the (laughs) list. Guys, sometimes I just wish you could see what's happening here. Um, I'm not even going to explain it. It's just hilarious. And it's just, uh, if you ask me off, send me a private message. I'll I'll tell you all about it. (laughs) Uh, Now, this next urban legend, you talk about sitting around a a, a campfire. It might have been the first time that I heard about this story. And it's probably someone, and I'm going to throw a name out here, Robert Saunders. Oh, yeah. Was probably the first guy to tell this story around the campfire. But this is an urban legend that goes back to, I mean, I, I think it's been around for years. I want to do this. Okay. I want to, I want to say this. Okay. okay. Just you, because, just because. All right. Here we go. A young couple has snuck off to a remote area to do some canoodling. Canoodling. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I left the rest out. Back seat of a car. They were in the back seat. Canoodling <laughs> in, in the, the back, back seat. <laughs> it has gone off the rails. Oh man. Uh, also known as Ardvarkin. Uh, <laughs> Now listen, that's really good. Don't make me spit that across the room. <laughs> Canoodling, art barking, or otherwise known as just pulling around in the backseat of a car. And uh, the, cus- the couple is suddenly interrupted by a screech, screech, screech. What could it be? Chris, what could it be? Well, apparently. Well, it, was, it was my dad. Come check on me. No, no I'm just kidding. It was no, a scary man been with been a, a bloody hook and a sc- calling on the side of the car window. And it was always that, kind of that story that they right. would leave and they would see like the, it was like an, es- an escaped mental patient that had a hook for a hand. <laughs> you know, I, well, what was he, a sea captain? You know, come on. Um, but yes, this actually... Um, Sometimes it had it where he would he would actually kill the people. Sometimes it was like they would come home and find that they were scratch marks on yeah, the side from, of the from car. the hook. Yeah, uh, basically, I think a cautionary tale to keep kids from canoodling. <laughs> <laughs> it oh, was not man. a deterrent. Has not. <laughs> Apparently, it didn't work. I'll uh, tell you something, ladies. When you're a young man, it's worth the risk. It's worth the risk. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, yes. Uh, uh, you know, most accidents are caused in the back of cars. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. Um, here's one that I heard about back in the day. And people would say, oh, no, this actually happens. You have to be careful. It's LSD tattoos. <laughs> being passed out to children yeah. oh i'm sorry the legend that <laughs> lsd temporary tattoos were being passed out to kids like an entire fifth grade class just there's a purple dragon up there by miss johnson and he's teaching physics you know um in the fifth grade in the fifth grade <laughs> and they get it that's the weird part uh but yeah that that was one and then uh now this next one you and i have heard story various stories about this and this is another one of those of like, well, my cousin has a friend, and this happened to them kind of yep. story. And that's the vanishing hitchhiker. And this has a lot of variations. It might be a young woman that they pick up or a young man. It sometimes changes. And sometimes uh, the, the mysterious hitchhiker will leave behind like a piece of clothing or something like that in the backseat. But it's always a hitchhiker is picked up on a dark, foggy night near some place and one variation of the story goes that they are as they're asking to be taken back to their home and when they get back to the home they go knock on the door and ask and they find out they've been dead for 20 years (laughs) or something like that but this is a classic a classic uh, ghost story ghost story that is kind of spread around you know uh when we were kids we we heard about this so you heard i'm sure different variations of this absolutely yeah i mean all of these 
Except for, um, I don't know, I guess all of them. Yeah. I've seen them. There was one on the front page. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the next one on the list here goes into the world of rock and roll. <clears throat> and that is Paul is Dead. And of course, I'm talking about Paul McCartney. There was a rumor going around in 1966 that Paul McCartney actually died and he was replaced by a double. Oh, he's a very good double. He's a very good double because we saw this double in concert, <laughs> we did. and he nailed it. He did. He's got it down, guys. Uh, it ain't so, nothing like that that uh, karaoke singer for Journey now. I'm no, sure. the karaoke singer for Journey. Uh, now, similar urban legends has also formed around Avril Lavigne and Melania Trump, and I don't know that that has no. But yes, what? that that they died and were replaced by doubles. It's weird. The internet's weird, dude, and it comes up with weird things. But this that that was pre internet, the whole I'll Paul you, is I'll dead. I'll tell you, thing. man, Avril Lavigne, pretty cute little girl. She's, she's pretty good. Listen, nothing happened she's to her not, except she married that guy from Nickelback for a while. That that's you know, that's it. That's all that happened. She's to her. not she's not a little girl. But I'm not mean, now. She's a woman, but Yeah. Well she was when she first came out. She was kind of a kid when she first got popular. How old was she? When ah, she started when she you first know. got started. She was really young. She's like in her forties now. Yeah. But you know. Um, and this next one, Chris, this urban legend here, uh, was passed around in mimeographs all over church parking lots in the 70s and 80s. And that is Procter & Gamble is a front for Satanism. And, and this, 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 this description is actually pretty accurate. I remember in 81, about the time that, that the company's logo, a bearded crescent man in the moon looking over a field of 13 stars, was a symbol of Satanism and that the, quote, owner was a Satanist. It's a publicly traded company. There wasn't an owner at this point. It was a publicly traded company. Uh, the stuff was mimeographed, passed around church parking lots, generally church or schools and everything during the 80s. Uh, actually, uh, some Amway distributors in the 90s we're still spreading this rumor and they got sued by Procter and Gamble and like Procter and Gamble won like millions in damages as if they this. needed it as if they needed it. But, you know, <laughs> uh, but, you know, as long as they're stopping Amway people, I, I'm, I'm OK with it. You know, Amway. <laughs> That money was, with multi-level marketing. That was that was big. That was, Amway was kind of big. Yeah, it was kind of big back in the day. And the last one that I have on my list, and we come up, we, we may come up with a couple. You know, more. this is the one on the list that I'm not really sure if it's an urban legend. Uh well, this okay. So the the whole legend was alligators in the New York City sewers. Now stories back, date back to the late 20s and early 30s. And in most instances, uh, you know, it's based on reports of alligator sightings in like New York City sewers. And the Times, the New York Times reports that the city rescues 100 alligators per year, uh, some directly from homes where they're kept. Now, 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 here's where I think that that could have happened. In the before things were regulated as much, you could go to Florida and buy alligators. Right. They were selling them at little roadside stands to tourists. Right. People would go home and realize, oh, these grow <laughs> and either turn them loose or, you know, maybe flush them. The, 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 the urban legend is they flush them down the toilet and that they, you know, thrived. The reality is, is that most people say, uh, like biologists and people who know about these things, that there's enough bacteria and stuff in the sewer, sewage, right. the raw sewage. They couldn't survive well, for any length of time. There's so, enough rats down there that I say they can. Well, <laughs> yeah, but rats can live on anything. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, you know, yeah, no, maybe. Who cares? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not uh, going to New York, so it doesn't I'm matter. Not, uh, and I'm damn sure not going in the sewer. No, not going in the sewer for sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, that. Uh, the uh, whole New York uh, alligators. I heard that forever. Oh, I, did I heard too. that forever. I mean, they had, they had, that was in movies. It was in movies. You yeah. would see people flushing an alligator down the toilet, and, and it turns thing, into yeah. like the this big mutant yeah. alligator. Yeah, I mean, I think it was on Sci-Fi. It, it should was, be, but it, it was uh, Sci-Fi. If you pick up that show, that uh, check should be made to uh, Butch and Chris. 
All right. Thank you very much. I like it. Yeah, I, I'm you. just trying to make us a little extra coin. Yeah, I appreciate it. So, uh, but man, uh, urban legends. When we grew up, man, we heard a lot of them. Do you, can, this can you think of this any does, others? No, I mean, I was going to say this doesn't really even scratch the, the list of all the crap that was going around, and no. I cannot for the life of me remember any other. Okay, ones. I'm going to tell you one, and I I can't go into too much detail because one, I don't want to get sued um, by mentioning anybody's name, but there was a famous rock star. Who was apparently have to be rushed to the hospital to yes. have his stomach pumped? Yes, and I, that's all I'm gonna say right there. If yep. you grew up when we did, you know who I'm talking about, and you know what I'm talking about. Yep. And apparently that wasn't true either. Well, so uh, I'm sure they don't want it to be true. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> or is yeah. it? <laughs> and what about the actor in the hamsters? Possibly gerbils. <laughs> Small rodents run. <laughs> okay, I'm done with that sound effect. Are you sure? I promise I'm Are done. Are you sure? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm done because I, I, I think we're done with this episode. And um, talking you know, right about here, Since lunches. we're right here at the end of this episode, I got a question to ask. Sure. You. Are you a turtle? You bet you're sweet. I got him. Uh, you got me. Uh, <laughs> if you know, you know. If you don't, you don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Retro Show. You can find out everything you ever wanted to know about us and possibly possibly more. Well, let me just retro tell you, Butch Renfro will never ask me that question on this show because I will give him the answer. And I'll have to edit it. <laughs> and that's all there is to it. But, uh, guys, listen, uh, we appreciate you listening and uh, thank all of those who tune in each and every week. And that was not me. That was not me. That, ladies and gentlemen, was Chris Curtis. Yeah. Hey, guys, thank you all for listening. I'm sorry. It was kind of convoluted tonight with Urban Legends and Butch's finger on that button. But it was fun. I it was fun. It. it was fun. <laughs> Listen, guys, RetroShow.net, I like all of you. No, I love all of you. I like some of you. See, man, it's been six weeks. It has. It AMF, has. guys. 